Hey, what's up guys? Theo here. In this video, I'm going to show you the basics of interpolation in just vanilla JavaScript. So we're going to do that. And so we're just going to have a file called uh, interpolation.js. Uh, or actually, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to open up my terminal here, go to my desktop, make a directory called interpolate, change directory into there, and we will touch a index.html file and we will also go ahead and uh, touch a script.js. Uh, with that, we'll open it with Sublime, and there we go. And let me stub out some boilerplate code. Okay, cool. And I'll just say interpolation demo. I'm gonna open up my build system down here. So we're not gonna have anything yet, um, but what I can do is bring in this script source and what we can do is a script.js inside of here what I can do is have this run on window.onload function sri run and uh, okay so with that I can go ahead and open this up so let me um, open this in the browser, Rule and Finder. And we'll say open with, open this with Chrome. And cool, so we got that. And what I'd like to do, there we go, it's running. Got that up and running. And I'd like to build out a function called interpolate which is just a function. And again, we're gonna have our um, interpolation matches, which is gonna be what we're gonna look for. It's gonna be equal to an array. This will be the first and this will be the second, the opening and closing. And basically this function is going to look for um, any elements, or basically what we're gonna do is we're gonna add on, we're gonna, you know, think about maybe something like Angular, right? Where we have, here we're gonna have a controller, right? And we're gonna set this controller, or, you know, actually we'll just say bind, bind me. And inside of here, we can have our interpolation. We'll just say name, okay? And we'll do one more. We'll say age. So now what I can do inside of the script.js is I can say, this is going to take in, um, this is just going to take in some properties, okay? And what we can do here is first, we can say var uh, controller. So we're gonna find out where the controller is. So we can say document.query selector. And this time we're gonna look for controller. Um, this will return to us a node that matches this uh, expression. So if we go in here, we re refresh, and we're not getting anything because we actually, we haven't run it yet. So let me go ahead and run this. So we can run interpolate, and I want to run it with this properties object of name is Theo, and age is 23. So we'll go back here and refresh this. You can see we're getting null right there, and I think that is because we said bind me, my bad. So here we go, we're just looking for bind me, that expression. Get rid of that. Go back in here, we'll refresh. Here we go, we got our div with bind me, awesome. Um, so that's good. And what we wanna do now is um, actually call document.query selector all. We don't just wanna match one, we wanna match all of them. So here you see we're getting a node list, not an array. So we're gonna convert this to an array. So we're gonna say array.from. You can use other methods, but I'm gonna use that. And um, what we can do now is we can say, actually I'm just gonna call this nodes, or we'll just say bindings. And down here I can say bindings dot uh, for each, and this will iterate through each binding. And what we'd like to do is, I'm gonna create a helper method here called has binding. 
and this is a function which will take in an element, and this is going to return element dot text content dot index of uh, interpolation matches zero, is greater than negative one, um, and also we want to see if uh, element dot text content dot index of interpolation matches one, is greater than negative one. And so we can just call um, console log has binding on binding. So watch this. If we refresh this, we got true because it does have a binding, right? But if we were to come in here and say div bind me, and you know we we uh, leave off a brace right there, we're gonna get true, true, and false. Cool. Um, so with that, we got our bind me on there. And now what I want to do is I can say if has binding of binding is equal to true, if it, it does indeed match uh, this sort of uh, regex that we're giving it, or not really regex, but just pattern, if it contains both of those, then what I want to do is I want to say binding uh, dot text content uh, but first we want to grab the value, right? We want to say, we want to say var value is going to be equal to binding dot text content dot slice. We want to start from the first, so right after this brace, um, plus binding dot text content dot slice. And then we want to say, uh, we want to slice off of there. Basically, we would like to just slice, or sorry, we want to do slice one to binding dot text content uh, dot last index last index of, and I'm going to give this uh, interpolation matches one, and now we can look at the raw value that we're getting back. And so if I come back in here, refresh this, we're getting name and age now. So we have exactly the data what we want. And so now what we can do, say is um, if, uh, basically we can say if uh, we're going to look at our arguments now, or basically we'd say properties. We can say if properties dot, uh, what are we going to look at? So this is an object. We can say if properties dot has own property value and um, value is not equal to null that means that we are on the right property or that we're going to interpolate so we'll say let's interpolate let's see if this works so let's interpolate we're getting that twice right so um, <clears throat> but it say we change this to age whatever we're going to see let's interpolate we get it one we don't get it twice and uh, so after that, we know we're ready to interpolate. So what we can do here is we can say, um, we're gonna do binding uh, dot text content is equal to uh, properties value. So that should do it for us, that should interpolate. And if we refresh, there we go. We've got our interpolation right there, bind me, Theo 23, and you know, we could even run this uh, just to sort of see it in action. We could run a set timeout on it, and we'll just start it after five seconds. And we can just wrap this in here, interpolate, and bring it over just a little bit more. Okay, cool. So we got that, and so we can sort of see this, this happening. Here we go, wait five seconds, and we can watch these change in here. What is it telling me? Oh, sorry, set timeout is with a lowercase o. So now, if we come back in here, there we go. We're going to wait, waiting our time, and these will eventually be bound. Here we go. There you go. And you can see them change one more time. You got the bindings in there. Our method is going to run after five seconds. And there you go. We got our interpolation. So hopefully, you guys enjoyed this. Uh, if you want to see the code, let me know, and I will upload it to GitHub. I've been working on my own framework, like I told you. And I was really curious, you know, how, um, basically how a, um, you know, how uh, this, this worked. 
And there's other ways to do it, um, but I think this is a very simple way. So, right, but again, if we log out bindings, what do we get? I mean, let's just look at this real quick. Let's sort of see if we can see it. It's going to run again after five seconds. But uh, so bindings is just div, right? And what I what you can also do is look for the children, right? So say we want to look for um, you know all the stuff inside of a controller, right? We could say controller, and then after that, right? We might have you know we might have you know h3 with a name property and h4, and then what we can do is we can actually change this, make this, I'm wrapping it like that, and take it back. And, uh, okay, so we can say name and age, right? And then instead of here, we can say right out from, and then I can say um, dot children. And now this should work similarly, and we're giving name and age, so let's look at uh, let me look at what I have for children. Let's log bindings. Let's just change it to one. Okay. Turn it for before each, and it's undefined. Okay, so let me alter this out a little bit. And bindings. And let's look at console.log. Bindings. Oh, okay, yeah, because we're going to, yeah, so query selector. Um, and I don't want to do, I'm just going to do it on one, so I'm going to change it actually. So query selector, bind me, and we'll say binding. Here we go. I'm just going to children, 11, query selector, all, let me refresh this, and we're going to be null again. So let me, oh, right, because I called it, sorry about that. Call it controller. There we go. And so what we get now is a controller. And what I can look for now is is children, so we can tack that on. And basically, this will be the same thing. So we're going to loop through all the children, and we should get this this time. So let's try it out. Finding stuff for each. Oh, sorry. So I do need to make it an array. But it is still a node list. And one more time here. There you go. And so what I was able to do was. Just look at the children, which are these, and it'll stop once it hits this outer div. So hopefully you guys enjoyed this uh, interpolation demo with uh, vanilla JavaScript. And thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Take care.